In this video, we're going to show you how to fill out the New York State Disclosure Form for buyer and seller if you are an agent representing a seller here in New York. So my name is Nick here at CryptFox. We are an easy to use software, a way for you to send out disclosure forms like the one we'll talk about today in just a few simple clicks. So create a free account today. It's very straightforward. Click send form, select the disclosure form that you need to send. For example, the buyer and seller that we're discussing. Click next add your client right here, click next, complete the form. And we'll talk about how you do this in this video and you send the form. So it's as simple as that. Create a free account today and stop wasting time with disclosure form requirements here in New York. So back to today's topic, we're going to discuss how to fill this out if you are a listing agent. So if you're a listing agent, you're going to be sending this form both to the seller who's retaining you as well as unrepresented buyers who may inquire on your listing or come into open houses. So in the first instance, let's talk about how to fill this out uh, if you are presenting it to the seller. And remember that you need to present this to them upon first substantive contact. That means you cannot present it to them at the closing or when, once you have an offer. You really do need to present it at the very, very beginning of any meaningful discussion that you may have. And technically that's even before the listing agreement. So the form itself is two pages. The first page just explains the various uh, relationships that you can elect. Um, we're not going to go into too much detail on some of the special cases, but um, most commonly when you submit a disclosure form to a seller who's going to hire you, it's going to be filled out like this. So up here you have your name, your licensed name. So if your name is, John Smith, don't put J Smith. If your name is um, Michael Jones, don't put Mike Jones. It has to be your licensed name. And similarly for the brokerage, it has to be the name of the legal entity. So if your brokerage company is Smithtown Realty and it's an LLC, you have to put LLC. So they're real strict about that. Just make sure your, your name as it appears in eAccess New York, your license name and the, the name of the, the licensed real estate brokerage um, that you're associated with. Now, when you're presenting it to the seller, you are almost always going to indicate that you are acting in the interest of the seller, putting a checkbox here, check mark or an X. And furthermore, almost always is the case, you're going to put seller's agent. So unless there's some special circumstance, you should just put an X here and an X here. And then you go down to the bottom here. This is going to be the name of the seller. So make sure that, you know, if there are like three owners, you have the names of all the owners on here. Uh, if it's, for example, an LLC, uh, maybe you wouldn't want to put the LLC name as well as the name of the authorized uh, member or manager or signatory for that LLC. So just make sure that, you know, you haven't like missed anyone on this form and then you want to date it and, you know, you send it off. So it's, it's that simple most of the time. Now you might be wondering, you know, what about dual agency? Like, um, can I represent a buyer? How do I, how do I do all of that? Well, you can technically send this form to the seller, uh, with the option selected of dual agent. And perhaps you could put like this. Now there's not necessarily any reason to do this because you don't have to be a dual agent in order to be eligible to collect both sides of the commission. By that we mean, let's say, you know, you have a 6% commission, the buyer agent commission is 3%. And if a buyer comes in unrepresented, can you collect the full 6%? Do you have to list it as dual agent? Well, the answer is no. The agency election status does not determine your ability to collect commission. Therefore, there's almost no reason to send this to a seller listed as dual agent with advanced informed consent to dual agency. It's much more prudent to basically act in the interest of the seller because your seller could immediately say, why are you being a dual agent? I want you to represent my best interests. And as you may be aware, um, the concept of undivided loyalty is the most important element when it comes to comparing the role of a seller's agent versus, versus a dual agent. As you see here in seller's agent, you have this duty of undivided loyalty. Now that's not the case with a dual agent. As you can see here, 
cannot provide undivided loyalty. And that's, uh, and similarly here, giving up their right to undivided loyalty. So, you know, uh, your, list, your seller might be like, I'm not signing that. Why am I agreeing to dual agency? I want you to represent my best interests. So why get into that argument or discussion when there's literally no reason to at this point? So just to summarize, this is what the form should be like in almost all instances when you're sending a uh, New York State disclosure form for buyer and seller to a seller who's about to hire you as a listing agent. Your name, brokerage name, seller, seller's agent, name of the seller, put an X for sellers, date, and send it to them. Now, as I mentioned, you can do this via CryptFox, super easy. Send form, select buyer and seller, click next. Put the name of the seller here, click next. And here, you're gonna basically fill in what we've talked about. So the signer in this case is gonna be the seller. You're acting in the interest of the seller as the seller's agent, click next. And you can then preview the form. So it's the exact form that we've been talking about. And you can see here, it pre-populates your name based on what you put in your CribFox profile and your company name. It has all the correct elections and it's, it can be sent out immediately. So close the preview, click send. And just like that, you've sent out the required disclosure form. If you click on forms, you can also see a record down below of the form you've sent. You can send a reminder, you can view the form, and you can also delete the form. And once it's signed, you can also download the form. So please consider using CribFox. There's no reason to be doing this manually using another DocuSign provider that's not optimized for real estate disclosure forms. With CribFox, you can also send out custom forms just as you can with any other e-signature software. So going back to uh, the disclosure form, we've talked about how to prepare it for a seller. But let's say now you've gotten hired, congrats, and uh, you know a buyer reaches out and they wanna have a call. They're out of town and they wanna have a detailed call about the listing and they don't have a buyer's agent. So, or, or you're not aware of them having a buyer's agent. So how do you satisfy licensing law with the disclosure form for the buyer? Well, it's super simple because as we alluded to before, you do not have to default to dual agent just to speak to an unrepresented buyer. All you have to do is keep all of this the same. You still act in the interest of the seller, the seller's agent. The only thing you're gonna change here is you're gonna put the name of the buyer and you're gonna move this over to the buyer. And so what you're doing here is you are disclosing to the unrepresented buyer with whom you're in touch that you are acting in the interest of the seller. Now, nothing prohibits you from speaking to them about the listing and you know if they want to submit an offer that's fine they can submit it to you they are disclosed they are informed of the fact that you are acting in the interest of the seller now they may very well say um you know hey i, I don't like the idea that um, i'm submitting an offer to you and you have undivided loyalty to the seller now if that occurs that would be the scenario where you need to have a discussion with both sides your seller and your buyer about shifting this over to dual agency so if that conversation needs to happen, then you basically have to resend this form to both buyer and seller, and you would have to make sure they both sign. Whereas normally, um, it's not required for the clients to actually sign the disclosure form. They just have to be presented with it upon first substantive contact. So we hope you found this video to be helpful. And if you don't take away anything from this video, aside from CribFox, you're all good because you just need to make sure that you have a record of sending this. If you deal with scans or you send it in another software and you don't have a record of it, um, and let's say the deal closes and there's some litigation, if you can't come up with the fact that you've sent the form, uh, you, you potentially have to forfeit your commission. So here in the forms tab in CryptFox, you can actually see the audit record of the fact that you presented the form. So if you click on view for that form we just sent, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can actually see the fact that it was sent out. So it satisfies um, you know, record keeping requirements for the fact that you actually did present the form. Um, so we hope you found this video to be helpful. Check out CribFox, create a free account today. If you have any questions, leave a comment below this video or send an email to team at cribfox.com and we'll see you on the next one.